Welcome back to the VC3 News Update in our local news stories. Grade 6 students registered for the 2020 Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, the CPEA, concluded their final examination on Friday, June 26, 2020. Of the 1,920 1, students registered, 1,915 wrote the final examination, 959 males and 956 females. Students' final scores were derived from the aggregate scores of both components of the CPEA. That is, the external assessment, which consisted of multiple-choice tests in mathematics, science, language arts, and social studies, and from the school-based assessment, which comprised a project, a writing portfolio, a book report, as well as teacher test, pupil made test and can do skills exercises in mathematics, science, language arts and social studies. The preliminary results indicate that the proportion of students who met the prescribed standard was 1,650 or 86.16 percent, a slight decrease over last year's 87.19 percent. The number includes 780 males and 870 females. Three male candidates tied for the top position with an average of 97.8%. Kai Francis of the Kingston Preparatory School, Matthew Wilson of the St. Mary's Roman Catholic School, and Ajani Neverson of the Windsor Primary School. In the external assessment subject performance, St. Mary's Roman Catholic School received the highest individual score. For mathematics, Matthew Wilson got a high score of 100%. In science, Nadja Lewis had a score of 100%. For social studies, Cristiano Fitzpatrick received 100%. And for language arts, Isabella Sam got a score of 98.67%. 50 out of the 68 schools recorded a pass rate in excess of 80%. The components of the CPEAR School-based assessments, 200 marks or 40% of the total score. External assessment, 300 marks or 60% of the total score. The criterion for determining the required standard is that students must acquire at least 50% of the possible 500 marks. The Ministry of Education congratulates all students and extends gratitude to the head teachers, teachers and staff at all schools for their support to the students. The Ministry is cognizant of the fact that outcome in education are measured not only in quantitative terms but also in qualitative terms. Therefore, the value added to the lives of all students, the top performers as well as those whose performance can be improved is greatly appreciated. Lieutenant Commander Dion Henry of the St. Vincent and Grenadines Coast Guard Service has become the third of Incension Nationals to graduate from the prestigious United States Naval War College, the USNWC, located in Newport, Rhode Island. The USNWC, established in 1884, is the oldest institution of its kind and has graduated more than 50,000 students. Its, final in, its first sorry, international officers program started in 1956 and currently has over 4,500 international um, alumni from 137 countries worldwide. Lieutenant Commander Henry is a graduate of the U.S. NWC Naval Staff College st Class of 2020. The NSC is a graduate-level professional development program designed for mid-career officers, preparing them for the higher positions of command and staff. The 11-month residential program of the NSC is divided into three trimesters, and conducted primarily in seminars, but also includes field studies, capstone exercises, and comprehensive writing assessments. The NSC class of 2020 was attended by 71 officers from 59 countries. Upon successful completion of the NSC, international students are awarded an NWC diploma and a select few are awarded a Master's of Arts in Defense and Strategic Studies degree. 
The Commissioner of Police, Colin John, Commander of the SPG Coast Guard Service, Brenton Kane, and the rank and file officers of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and the SPG Coast Guard Services congratulate Lieutenant Commander Henry on his outstanding achievement. Still in our local stories, Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves has urged persons involved in processing of applications for the government's promoting youth micro enterprise enterprises or prime program to desist from charging applicants for various services. Speaking during his weekly discussion program aired on NBC Radio on Wednesday of this week, the Prime Minister said it has been reported that applicants are being charged for assistance they receive in the development of their business plans and a practice which he said is not acceptable. I want to tell people, you apply for prime and you go down to CED, Center for Enterprise Development, or you go to the prime office and anybody tells you that here is the name of some man or woman who will help you with the business plan, but is you got to pay them $500. Tell them that I say. Tell them that Ralph say that they talk in foolishness. If they want to get help for any other friend who would do in business plan, they must find another way to, 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 to see if they could get a, their, their friend from, help from their friend. It is true that some persons may need professional assistance with their business plan, particularly if you're going for a number close to the 40,000. And it is true that CED who's supposed to help may be overwhelmed. But you can't ask somebody who's coming. They don't know whether they're going to get the prime grant or not. For them to t give $500 to somebody to do a business plan, are they crazy? No, that's not the policy of the government, you know. Dr. Gonzalez said arrangements will be made to provide the necessary assistance to applicants seeking prime funding. SVG-based Airline One Caribbean Limited will be establishing a base in Barbados beginning with at least four daily flights out of that country. The announcement was made by the Barbados Minister of Tourism, Kerry Simmons, as he addressed the 20th Annual General Meeting of the Inmate Hotels of Barbados by video conference. Mr. Simmons said several other airlines have expressed an interest in filling the void left by the liquidation of Liat. And finally, in our local stories, farmers across SVG are being encouraged to take advantage of the opportunity to access fertilizers at a reduced price at the Agricultural Input Warehouse. The call came from Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves during his weekly discussion program aired on NBC Radio. Dr. Gonsalf said the initiative is intended to assist farmers in boosting agricultural production during the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Gonsalves appealed to persons within the Ministry of Agriculture to make every effort to accommodate farmers seeking to purchase the fertilizers. That's our local stories. Next, regionally, Inter-Caribbean Airways offers jobs to Liat employees.